Hello fellow bookworms, it's Katie. Today let's talk about another non-fiction book. This time it's called The Glass Universe, How the Ladies of the Harvard Observatory Took the Measure of the Stars by Deva Sobel. So in this book we follow the history of the Harvard Observatory from 1880 to roughly 1950. So that's a span of 70 years. We learn how the reigning director of 1880 got funded by Mrs. Anna Draper because her husband was an astronomer himself and he sadly died and Mrs. Draper wanted his work on spectroscopy, spectroscopy damn it, of the stars continued. Mrs. Draper funded the well-known Draper catalogue of the stars. Also this is about the ladies that actually came up with the Draper classification system of the stars. They all took the glass plates with the photographs of the stars and the spectra of the stars and looked at them with magnifying glasses and calculated, for example, chemical compounds and their luminosity and gradually even discovered that actually the Milky Way isn't the only galaxy in the universe. A lot of astronomical discoveries were made during that time and a lot of them were due to the work of the women of the Harvard Observatory, without whom we probably would still think that the Earth is the center of the universe. Let's move on to the content. This book covers a lot of history and it is very, very detailed, which results in a long line of dates and names. It really covers the entire history of the entire Harvard Observatory, not just of the ladies, of the computers as they are called, but of all of the people involved, such as the directors, the assistants. It also covers the discoveries of several other figures because they were influencing to the Harvard Observatory's discoveries. There's a lot of explanation of astronomical procedures and discoveries, like a lot. I'm actually glad that I read Neil deGrasse Tyson's Astrophysics for People in a Hurry before I read this book because I wouldn't have understood half of the things that are in this book. Although this book does have a very de detailed glossary, so you can definitely catch up on the astronomical things that you don't understand, which I was very glad for. Through the structure, it goes chronologically from roughly 1880 to 1950, and it follows the leading figures of the observatory. The writing I found very literary. I could see that there was effort put into it to make it readable, although it was a succession of names and dates. Which brings us to my personal thoughts and opinions. To be honest, I was a little bit disappointed because the subtitle says how the ladies of the Harvard Observatory took the measures of the stars and I thought for myself for most of the time, though, where are the ladies at? Because a lot of time we spent with the directors, they are all men at that time. What a surprise. We still talk a lot about the ladies, but they pinpoint certain ladies like Antonia Murray, Melamina Fleming, Annie Jump Cannon, Henrietta Leavitt. 20 women worked as computers and we talked about like four or five of them. And that's a little bit sad because that's not that's not all of them, that's not even half of them. And I just thought with that subtitle, I had certain expectations, you know. I was ready to read something of the Harvard Observatory ladies that was put into context of feminism and maybe like talk about the feminism of that time because that was a time of the suffragette movement and women get the right to vote. And I thought these were women doing work in a very male-dominated field. And for my expectations, we did spend too much time with the men's. I wasn't here for that. I'm here for the ladies. Generally, I thought this book lacked a little bit of focus. In the end, it is very just like, okay, these are the people, this is what happens, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this pe person says this about this, and then this happens. And while that is all good and interesting to some extent, I just wanted to read about the women in science. In the end, there's a little bit of the focus of, oh, hey, there are still not enough women in science. That's still a male-dominated field. And women still don't get the same recognition that men do. I think the book tried to make that point, but it kind of fell short for me because it wasn't really clear. It didn't, it wasn't like a red line that went through all of the book. It was just like kind of shoehorned into the book right at the end. I mean, it's true. Women 
are still not as recognized in science as men are, so that would have been an important point to make. I found it just a little bit boring with the succession of dates and names. I didn't really have a character to anchor my interest in. We didn't follow the ladies enough or we didn't get enough of a character overview of the ladies that I could say, I know these ladies, I know them and I know how they felt about certain things and in general I just would have wished for more. It didn't live up to my expectations and that's a little bit sad. Let ha it happens sometimes. Quality wise I would give this book four stars because it is very incredibly researched and there are just so many notes in the back of the book but unfortunately it didn't live up to my expectations so I have to give it only three stars because maybe the subtitle wasn't exactly the subtitle this book would have needed. That was it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this review. Have you read this book? If so, what did you think about it? And uh, otherwise, I hope you're having an awesome day. I hope you're reading something magical and wonderful. And that was it. Bye!